university, Bin University and the presenter uh, moderators. We delighted to see all of you in the live virtual present today, uh, especially in this workshop. We do hope that all of you will be able to have a renewable knowledge and experience and well text away following the talk uh, before the workshop. There are some few considerations in case uh, you have any question or concern about the workshop, please feel free to leave them in the chat box so we can get the question easy response in the five to 10 minutes Q&A session. Uh, first of all, I am very glad to welcome David Days in this workshop with the titles, Teaching for Success, Making Effective Use of CPD Frameworks for Teacher and Teacher Educators about the presenters. Uh, David A. Warrenis, uh, Jean Martins, a British uh, cultural Vietnam and for education system, academic managers. He a teacher educator with more than 22 year experience. He has been living in Hanoi, Vietnam since 1999 and has worked with British cultural since 2003. He holds a BA in town and country planning a Trinity Certificate Teacher and a Cambridge Data. He has extensive experience of teacher development products across East Asia, having designed and delivered numerous courses and workshops for British cultural products, uh, such as uh, Access English, uh, IT Citizens, Academic Teaching Excellent, uh, Connecting Classrooms, English for Teaching, Eric, Primary Innovation, uh, teaching for Success, Thailand Regional English Training Centers in China, Indonesia, Myanmar, Peru, Thailand, and Vietnam. He also had experience at the IEL examiner and a Cambridge uh, Teacher Oral Examiner team leader. Uh, prior to entering the education sector, he spent eight years working in the UK local government sectors as an urban and policy planner. Please welcome David Dice. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tao. It's great to see you again. And thank you, Ms. Ha also. Um, <laughs> it's uh, really nice to see everybody and see so many people here this morning. Uh, and on the first day, well, the, the first pre-convention uh, workshop of Viet Sol uh, 2021. Um, apologies for the late start. Um, we obviously were waiting for the um, the uh, opening ceremony <clears throat> uh, to finish, but so that's why we decided to start just a few minutes late. So I hope you don't mind. Don't worry, we will still aim to finish this morning session at around 10.30 or 10.35 as well. I'll try to keep on time. Um, <clears throat> can you, hopefully you can all see the, sc the screen. Okay, and hopefully you can all hear me as well. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tao, for that very comprehensive introduction uh, to, to me. There's a, a kind of a quick summary there for you, a much, hopefully a much uh, shorter uh, summary of some of the information about myself and my time here in Vietnam as both a teacher and a teacher educator. Um, and also Tao and myself did work on, a, as she mentioned, one of the projects that we, British Council, worked on was the Primary Innovations Project, working with uh, primary teachers and lecturers um, back in oh, 2008 to 2012, 14, I think it was. And Tao and I both worked on the same project. So we're old, we're old colleagues who haven't seen each other for many years. So it's great to catch up with old, old friends as well, like Miss Tao. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm just going to say thank you. Uh, I see that Ya Khoi has put in good morning from Siem Reap in Cambodia. So please, while I share, share this screen, just type in where, where are you? I, where are you from in Vietnam? And maybe where, if you're from a different part of uh, the world outside of Vietnam, just type in the chat very quickly and I can just get an idea of where you, where you were all from. Okay, that would be, I'd appreciate that. Okay, oops. Uh, so moving on, as Tao says, this morning we're going to look at uh, CPD frameworks, what are they and how we can make good use of those for both teachers and teacher educators. Um, 
at the start, in just a few minutes, we're going to do some polling using the Mentimeter. So in a, if you can please log on on your phone or on your device, if you can log on to Mentimeter, I will sh share with you a QR code in just a few minutes, okay? Uh, but before we do that, and before I find out a little bit about your teaching experience to help with our session today, let's talk about our learning outcomes. What is the main content that we, that we hope, I hope, that we can cover uh, this morning? So we're going to look at what is CPD and what is good, uh, sorry, what, what does a good CPD look like? And some examples of some CPD frameworks. I'm going to introduce you to some examples uh, from Vietnam, from Southeast Asia, as well as from around the world, including the one from British Council, which we're going to spend time using later on. Um, so as I said, you, we're gonna consider how you can use the British Council's uh, CPD frameworks. Uh, notice the plural there, frameworks. We'll come back to that in a few later on in the session. Also, as it's a workshop, I want you to have some time to identify and address your own professional development needs and reflect on those. Um, and again, we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. And then hopefully towards the end of the session, we'll have a chance, uh, or you'll have a chance rather, to start thinking about devising your own action plan as well and getting some ideas using, this, using the CPD frameworks. Uh, I'm just jumping onto the, onto the, um, onto the chats uh, to see where people are from. Okay, oh, a few people from Cambodia, that's great. Bing Zung, Sihanoukville in Cambodia, Dat Lak, Ha Ting, uh, Dong Nai. Oh, there's quite a few people in, from Cambodia, that's fantastic. Uh, Hanam, Anzang, Tuyen Wang, Dong Nai, excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. So that's the content, that's, those are our learning outcomes and I will sh share this screen at the end as well before we do the Q&A. As Tao mentioned at the beginning, um, there will be some time at the end for questions, but if you have any particular questions as we go through, I will, again, I will give you some time throughout the session. I will keep monitoring, try to monitor the chat as well. And if there are any um, burning questions or any questions related to the various stages as we go through. Please don't wait till the end. Please feel free to uh, raise your hand if, if you have that function, if you're on Zoom, um, raise your hand and we can address the question in real time. Which leads to my next slide. Remember, this is a workshop, it's not a lecture. I'm not going to talk <laughs> for two and a half hours. I would have no voice after two and a half hours, okay? So there will be some input from me obviously, as we've just covered in the previous slide. But um, there will be some interactive activities and tasks for you to do and to take part in uh, over the next two, two plus hours, okay? And um, so as participants, we have, so far we have just over 110, 116 people so far. So as participants, you're expected to engage in these activities. So what do I mean by that? Hopefully you will join in, you'll share, your ideas, your experiences, you'll discuss uh, and reflect on the frameworks with your colleagues. And as well as at the end, hopefully some time to start thinking about drafting an action plan using the CPD frameworks. Most importantly, as we heard from the, in the opening uh, speeches and the opening ceremony, um, make sure that you enjoy the session. <laughs> Again, different, the, the today is quite different from the next two days, the next two days, quite short presentations and, and more kind of lecture style. Today is, today is all about workshops. So more opportunities for interaction. And also hopefully at the end of the session today, you'll have some new tools and some new ideas to take away for your own continuing professional development as teachers. So that's a little bit about the process of what we're going to do over the next couple of hours, okay? So first thing, okay, hopefully while I was talking, you had a chance to go onto the Menti uh, meter, uh, if you're familiar with that. If not, you can go onto Menti and you can use the QR code here. And I've got two questions for you to start with. All right, 
and then I can share my screen. Hopefully, I can share my screen. Uh, decline. Okay. If you have any questions or any problems, just type them in the chat, yeah, and we'll try to deal with those directly. Hopefully you've all had a chance to take a, a, a screenshot with your phone, uh, with your smartphone of the QR code. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go to, bear with me a second. I'm going to change my screen. Okay, so I'm looking at the, this is the code that you need, all right? Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't already seen it, this is the, this is the code. There you go. Oops, if you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that tau, can you see? Yeah, I can see it. Oh, all right, great, thank you. So if you can. <clears throat> okay, so I can on... help you, I can help you. I can copy the link with the yeah, brilliant. Thanks, com, now. and then they can yeah. enter the code. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just moving, moving between different screens. So just bear with me a few seconds. Um, okay, so it's great to see uh, if you put in, if you've gone to menti.com or if you've just put in the Q, uh, use the QR code uh, and use the code here, then we can start to find out um, which of these five different uh, terms best describes you. We've got one so far. Uh, Vic has raised her hand. Vic, you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Tom, for putting that in the chat and the code. Brilliant. Yeah. So if you couldn't, if you couldn't get the QR code, you can have a look look in the in the chat. Uh, moderator Miss Tao has put in the link and the code to to join, just so we can find out a little bit more about you. Because I think we have 116 people. The last time I looked, 123 now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be great to find out a little bit more about your experience. So far, we have one pre-service teacher and one primary teacher. I'll give you a couple more minutes uh, to, to, to vote using Mentimeter. Maybe one more minute. We've got 25 people have voted so far, which is a good start. More people coming in and joining.
try and see if we can get to some get to 75 that would be a good that would be a good percentage out of 120 plus people We're up to 40 so far Okay, things are quieting, quietening down now. So let's maybe let's move on. All right. So it's, I can see quite the largest percentage of people are on the call on the, the workshop today are pre service teachers, maybe from Ving University. Um, so welcome. Uh, also, um, secondary teachers and then also kind of secondary teachers and university lecturers or researchers about the same. Okay, so that's really useful information for me. Um, very few primary teachers or teacher educators. So again, I will, I will change my workshop uh, presentation slightly to, to appeal to hopefully to different groups. Okay, um, so thanks very much for that. <clears throat> we're, almost at, we're almost at 50, which is, not, uh, which is not too bad as well. Okay, yeah, thank you. Sorry, there should be DOET, DOET officials in the options. That's a very good point, uh, Ms. Kim, uh, yeah. Kim, thank you very much. I sh good point. I just try to <laughs> keep it very general, focusing more on different types of teachers, but you're right about DOET, DOET officials as well. Thanks for that. Okay, and there's a second question, which I hope you can see. Maybe. I can get the screen up. Oops, bear with me a second. Okay. And in the set, oops. Yeah, the second question for you. Today we're looking at CPD frameworks. So we've got about a fifth just about 45 people that voted on the first question. So now the second question, okay. Have you ever used a CPD framework to support you in your professional development? So whether you're a pre-service teacher, a secondary teacher, a university teacher, or a DOA official, or some of the other groupings, have you ever used a CPD framework? Let's see if we can, get, let's see if we can get about, again, about 45 people, okay. <clears throat> voted on the first question. Uh, only 25 people voting so far, but vast, the vast majority say no, not yet, okay? Um, so that's, again, useful information and, and not, not really a surprise. Um, one person said, yes, I have. I'm gonna, I hope I don't mind if I put you on the spot. Um, could you, if that person, could you perhaps put your hand up and share? Oh, we've got more people now, up to 37. So we're almost up to 45 from the first round. Yeah, still all saying no, not yet. So again, so CPD frameworks might be quite a new concept. 
or, or a new tool uh, that you're not so familiar with. And that's absolutely fine. That's, that's why we're having the session, the workshop this morning, okay? So one person said, yes, I have. Would they be willing to put their hand up and just to, just uh, um, say what they, oh, there's two people now, sorry. If either of those people would like to say what framework they used, you can either write in the chat or you can uh, put your hand up and, and speak if you unmute yourself. No, no volunteers. Okay. All right, we got to four. We got to forty-three anyway, which was the which was the number we had uh, before. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, so, oh, sorry, to one person. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I can't read your name. Is it Piet D? Yes. You got your hand up. Can you share your experience of using a CPD framework? But, but. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you very clear, thank you. Can you say your name and where you're from? Okay, so um, Pekadei, I'm from Cambodia. Hi, nice to meet you, Pekadei. Yeah. Okay, so CPD. Okay, so in terms of in my country, so I have just joined the seminar that talking about the CPD system information and you know, CPD, you know, in terms of Cambodia, it means continue us, professional development. So in my, in my country, uh, you know, the government just, or, you know, education sector just uh, create one app. It is like the system and, you know, let the teacher to join different kinds of you know, workshop or seminar to complete their credit, right? To improve their professional developments. But, you know, it, it just in, you know, uh, like the first time and we, we just, uh, you know, in discussion about this, about okay. this system and it is not, you know, issue as the real one. Maybe okay. need more time to develop the process or develop the system. Okay, sure. So it's like, a, but it's an app for teachers, yes? An app for, for to help teachers with their CPD? Yes, of course. Okay, all right, great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that, uh, PhD. And I saw uh, Miss, um, oh, I forgot your name already. <laughs> Bear with me a second. Miss Kim, Miss Kim, you, you got, you, I saw you had your hand up. Do you want to share your CPD experience? I assume you're a, an official from DOET, maybe an ELT specialist. Miss Kim, are you there? I can see your hand up. Yeah, please unmute and we'd we'll love to hear from you and maybe put your camera on. Well. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tang. Actually, Kim is the middle name, not the given uh, name. Yes. So what's your, uh, what's yeah, your I, yeah, my name is Tang. Sorry, and actually, I, I worked as an English teacher in a high school for 14 years and uh, in 14 years. And I have just uh, I have just been working for the Twin Front uh, uh, for three years now. And I think okay. that as an, as an English teacher, uh, any teachers need to have their own uh, CPD uh, to develop okay. uh, their professional works. So I just wonder how the difference is between the, uh, the teachers all uh, CPD designed by their themselves to recognize their strengths uh, or weaknesses uh, to improve themselves. Uh, what is the difference? What are the main differences between the professional CPD and the, their own uh, piece, uh, CPD? Yes. Okay, thanks Tang. Yeah, it's nice. Nice to finally meet you. I've heard about, I've heard a lot about you from my colleague, Miss Nga uh, and other colleagues. So uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to visit Tuyen Guang uh, sometime soon. Thanks, that's a really good question actually from both, from both of you. And we'll come back to that in just, just a few minutes. I've got one more question, one more mentee question for you. All right, so again, if you have a look 
on the oops on the next slide again i've got a new qr code for you if you can see that okay this is the last don't worry this is the last question uh, so again if you can if with you, if you have your phone if you click on the qr code or a towel or heart if you could help me to put the 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 um the hyperlink in the chat that would be really useful and then we can find out some information about that question as well. Find the final question for you, which goes back to actually to what uh, Miss Tang from Tui and Wang was talking about, kind of very, very much. So thank you, Tang. That was a perf your question was perfectly timed because it leads into the it leads into this final question. Okay. Yeah, thanks Hal for putting that in the in the chat. That's great. And again, you can have a look at the QR code. I'll just give you 10 more seconds and then I'll go on to the, to the Mentimeter to see what the results are. Okay. <clears throat> That's a different one, so bear with me a second. Aha, here we go. Okay, so this is the this is the third and final question for you. Okay. And I can present that now. So this is a word cloud. Can you name up to three for you? Again, this, again, this goes back to think about the question that Ms. Tang just asked. Can you name up to three area, knowledge areas or teaching skills or professional practices that you would like to develop as a teacher? So whether you're a pre-service teacher, a secondary teacher or a university lecturer, okay? Um, or some of the other groups as well, okay? three areas or teaching skills that you'd like to develop uh, for, your, for your professional development. So for example, maybe it's about lesson planning, maybe it's about giving instructions, maybe it's about pronunciation, um, or it could be about another, maybe assessing your students, maybe it's about using technology, using online tools and apps, okay? So if you can just Again, using the, the menti, using the code there. If you can just write in no more than three words or phrases, okay? To do with, uh, and thanks Hal for putting the code in as well. Okay, let's see, I'll give, you, I'll give you about another maybe minute to get some ideas. We have one person so far. Let's see if we can get up to about 30 or 40 people as well for our word cloud. <clears throat> I will be quiet for a moment. Okay, so some, we've got up to seven so far, so maybe it takes a little bit more time. Quite looking at the word cloud so far, quite a few of you have talked about technology, digital tools, online tools, um, lesson planning as well, okay. Um, what else have we got there? 
yeah, interaction, motivating students, engaging activities. That, yeah, that's a really important aspect, I think, um, that many teachers do talk about. And also a few people have started talk, uh, mentioning assessment as well. All right, I'll just give you maybe 30 more seconds to try and add some, add some ideas to our word cloud. <clears throat> Yeah, assessment seems to be quite, becoming quite uh, popular now. Okay. A little bit, a little bit slower with this, with this question, maybe because you have to type and think about and type in some words. Don't worry, we're going to come back to this and explore this in more detail as we go through the session. But please feel free to add uh, add some more words to the word cloud if you still have access to the Menti, uh, and we can then afterwards I can share this with you after the session. Um, also, I should have said at the beginning. My apologies. Uh, I will be sharing my PowerPoints with you as well. So all the links that you'll be seeing in the next uh, hour or so, you'll have, you'll have access to all of those. Uh, we'll make sure we, we share those with you after the, after the session today. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this now because we only have 11 people out of, out of 40, the 45 that we had earlier <laughs> uh, taking part. Okay, and I'm gonna go back, gonna go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So uh, we talked a little bit about CPD and what does good CPD look like? So here you've got a couple of uh, quotes, okay? And again, think about the question that Miss Tang from Twin Guang asked before. Um, CPD, I'll just read the first one to you and you can read the second one. CPD is planned, continuous, lifelong process where teachers try to develop both their personal and professional qualities, and also improve their knowledge, their skills, and their practice, okay? So these, those are some of the key words from that first definition of CPD. Why do we do that? Why do we uh, continually improve our professional development and also our personal development? Again, for the benefit of our learners, for the benefit of our students, and to help them with their learning, okay? So there's a couple more quotes there, the one at the bottom for you, and I've got two more over here, which you can look at, as I say, when I share the PowerPoint for you, okay? Oops, okay. One thing about CPD, it's a process. It's not a single event. So you might attend, for example, today, attending this workshop is a one-time event. It's a one-time training event, it's a workshop or you might attend a one day uh, seminar or lecture, or you might attend this, this convention via Tessel over the next two or three days. That's an event, a, a one-time event. But CPD is something much more long-term and something that we should all take into consideration no matter what kind of teacher or lecturer we are. <clears throat> Think about it not just in terms of your professional development as a teacher, Think about other aspects that you might want to develop. So for example, think about in your personal life, you might want to be a cook or develop your cooking skills. You might want to keep fit or you might want to learn to, be a, to drive a car, for example. Again, all of those take time. And you, we can think about it in terms of different stages. So first of all, we might think about our awareness of the skill or the skills that we're developing. Have we heard of it? Do we know anything about it? And then we can develop that to a kind of a higher level, a higher stage of understanding, knowing what it means, why it's important. Then we can move to the engagement stage where we start to demonstrate some competency, either as, as, a, driving, uh, as a driver or as a cook or as a teacher in, in, in different aspects of teaching. And a, a kind of a high, even higher level stage we might define as integration, where we integrate uh, these skills, this knowledge, these practices as part of our life, as part of our work, both for ourselves and our professional development, 
but also to help others. So for example, for us as teachers, to help our students to learn. So we can think about it in, in terms of a set of questions as well. So what's the issue or what's the challenge that our students might be facing? That could be the first question we might ask our, ourselves. So for example, if you think about the word cloud, um, our students, many of the comments were about uh, how to engage our students, how to motivate them, okay? For ourselves as teachers, obviously during the last 18 months with COVID, many, all teachers have had to face with moving online. So again, becoming more familiar with digital tools, online tools and technology. That could be a challenge facing us as a teacher or facing us in our work with our students. So then we can ask the question, how can I learn more about it? What can I do? Again, think about Ms. Tang's question. It was a really good question. What can we do ourselves to develop ourselves? Okay. And then once we thought about different things we can do, for example, attending a workshop, attending a conference, going online and doing some reading, checking out some websites, then we can start to apply that learning and reflecting on that application. And through that applying our learning and through reflecting on it, we can decide whether it has worked or whether it is working and improving both our teaching and our students' learning, okay? So those are some, those are some steps perhaps in the process uh, that, we can, that we can think about if we think about um, CPD. Um, <clears throat> oops, I'm just checking uh, into the, the chat. Okay, so a little bit about the, very briefly about the British Council um, and about our approach for, to teaching for success. Um, CPD is at the heart of our teaching for success approach. So evidence shows that if we improve the quality of teaching, this has the most impact on improving the outcomes of our learners. There's a direct correlation there. And CPD, ongoing professional development, is perhaps the most effective way to improve the quality of teaching and therefore learning. As we saw in the, one of the, the first uh, quotes that I shared with you, CPD is planned, it's continuous, and it should be lifelong throughout the, the, the duration of our career as a teacher. And through it, we as teachers can develop, as we mentioned, both our personal and our professional qualities, kind of our hard skills and our soft skills in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills, and in terms of practice as well. And this also improves our professional autonomy. So again, going, I keep, sorry, I keep going back to Ms. Tang's question about teachers developing themselves, okay? Taking that idea about autonomy for a teacher's own professional development, as well as our performance in the classroom, okay? And also, of course, for the ultimate benefit of our, our learners, our students, okay? And again, you've got a, a link there at the bottom to more information about our approach. So having talked a little bit about CPD, now let's look at some examples of some CPD frameworks. Um, when we did the question, the second question earlier, it, it was obvious only, only one or two people had ever used a CPD framework. So to most of you, this is, this is new territory, maybe unfamiliar territory for you. So on the screen here, you can see two two examples, two different examples of uh, two different CPD frameworks. You're gonna see these in more detail in just a few minutes. On the left, you can see there five main areas, okay? Planning, teaching and learning. The third one, assessment of learning. So again, in the word cloud, many of you mentioned assessment. Um, uh, in the second one there at the bottom, teaching and supporting learning. Uh, we talked about learner autonomy and at the end the teacher as a professional so again how the teacher can develop their own autonomy and how they can continue to develop themselves okay so you can see five main areas there and underneath you can see 25 subsections that's one example of a um, of a one type of cpd framework on the right you can see a different example here we you can see um in the wheel in the circle, okay, you can see different professional areas. So rather than five, you can see 12 different professional areas 
but you can see some similarities there. For example, planning, teaching and learning. You see there planning uh, lessons and courses. Uh, further around the wheel, you can see assessing learning. We've got assessment of learning. Uh, right at the bottom, I think somewhere, oh no, kind of, <laughs> kind of uh, eight o'clock, eight o'clock on the wheel. You can see taking responsibility for professional development. So again, that's similar to the teacher as a professional. So you can see there are 12 professional practices and you can see the stages of development uh, from awareness through to integration. And why are we developing in this way? If you can see at the core, we're looking to improve quality in the classroom. So quality of teaching results in improved learning as well, okay? As I say, we're gonna look, you're gonna to come to these, these are just two examples just to give you a very, very brief introduction, okay? We're gonna look at these in, in more detail in just a minute. So I'm gonna introduce to you maybe about four or five, I think, different CPD frameworks. So the first one, I'm, oh, I can't show you because of, of the backdrop, is this one here, okay? This is from Moet here in Vietnam, okay? The Moet competency framework. Has anybody seen or used this? Maybe you can write in the chat, okay? I see we're up to 140 people now. So welcome, welcome to those of you who've joined. Sorry you missed the beginning. Okay, no, no, nobody has seen this before. Okay, so this was developed by the Vietnam Institute of Educational Sciences back in 2012, 2013. And again, if you look on the right, you can see the framework. We've got five main areas there. Uh, knowledge of subject, knowledge of teaching, knowledge of learners, okay, and then kind of two smaller areas as well. So that's one example from here in Vietnam. Across East Asia, CMEO, if you've heard of CMEO, okay, uh, which deals with uh, education across uh, East Asia, um, across the 10 uh, ASEAN countries, they developed a teacher competency framework um, oh, I can't remember when it was, bear with me a second, 2017, in 2017. You can see there is, again, we've got a different format, we've got a wheel, and at the heart of the wheel, we've got not quality in the classroom, we've got a joyful learner. And you can see kind of four quadrants, four, four corners, looking at uh, knowing and understanding what teaching is, helping the students, engaging the community, and becoming a better teacher. Um, and again, you can have a look at those. There's a link at the bottom there. You can have a look at that and think whether that this competency framework would be would be the most interesting or most useful for you. So we've seen one from Vietnam. We've seen one from Southeast Asia. Now we're going to look at, look at a couple uh, of other ones uh, from around the globe. Oops, wait a second. Yeah. Oops. So that yeah, there's again when I share the the information for you. There's more information and some links to the CMEO uh, teacher competency framework. We're moving on to the equals one now. Equals is a body, uh, it just stands for um, eval the evaluation and accreditation of quality language services. Okay. And here you can see this is the one I showed you right at the beginning with the five, the five main areas and the 25 subsections. And you can see a description on the left hand side there. So again, this is designed to help teachers to evaluate and reflect on our own language teaching and our own language teaching competencies, but in greater depth with, a, with specific descriptors. So again, after our workshop, you can go online, you can click on the link when I share with you the PowerPoints, or you can have a look online now, and you can see that the framework there that they have. And again, all of these different frameworks can be used um, to help you to develop your own expertise. Two more to show you. Again, that's, that's the one I showed you earlier in, in more detail. Next one is from Cambridge English. I'm sure you've all heard of Cambridge English. Um, here they have, as you can see on the right, five categories. So again, you see before the equals one and the, uh, the, the Vietnam, the, the Vietnam Moet one also had five categories. Uh, learning and the learner, language ability, professional development, we talked about um, teaching, learning and assessment, the relationship between teaching, learning and assessment. Here, again, if you look on the left hand side, 
each category has four stages of competency. Different words, but similar to the one, the, the four stages I showed you before. Foundation, developing, proficient, and expert. So again, this framework is designed to help you think about the skills you have or the skills you want to develop. And you can use the framework and you can use the stages to work out where you are and how you might want to develop. Here is the framework in more detail, okay? So you can see on the, the left-hand side there, on the, um, on the vertical axis, you can see the five main areas. And on the horizontal axis at the top, you can see the four stages of development from foundation through to developing, through to expert at the end. So again, as a teacher, we could look at that framework and we think, oh, where do, where do I think I am at the moment? Where would I place myself? And where do I want to go in my, in my professional development? And again, there's much more detail on the, on the website. So again, afterwards, you can click on those links at the bottom. The second link at the, at the very bottom as well explains a bit more about how and why the framework was developed. So for those of you that might be interested in research, uh, into this area of CPD framework, that's a really useful resource for you, okay? So I'd, I'd recommend that those of you perhaps who are at univer university lecturers or research looking at CPD for your, for your students, okay? Okay, so we've had a look at that one. And then fi finally, I think this is the last one. Yes, the final one, you've seen this before at the very beginning when we looked at the examples, you see the wheel again, the orange wheel. <clears throat> This is the CPD framework for teachers, uh, which has been developed, I think, originally in 2011 and then revised in 2015. I think it's being revised again at the moment. Um, and again, very similar to the previous two, to the Cambridge one and the Equals one, designed to help teachers, help us um, assess where we're at, assess the various areas we'd like to develop and think about which stages we're at. So again, you could, you, not today, because we haven't got that much time, but if you're interested, you could certainly spend some time looking and comparing those different CPD frameworks um, and looking at the similarities and the differences between them. So, for example, you'll notice that both the, um, the British Council and the Cambridge one have kind of four stages of de development. The equals one has just three stages of development. OK. And again, you can see many of the skills, many of the professional practices that maybe different language, different words, but they're very, very similar in, in the areas that they cover. Um, oh, thanks, Hal, for putting that into the, in the chat. So I'm just keeping my eye on the chat. Also, you have the QR code at the bottom there. So again, if you want to have, you can have a look at that. Okay, but we're gonna spend a bit more time in the rest of the session, we're gonna spend a bit more time looking at the British Council uh, CPD framework for teachers. There are actually, two or three different frameworks for different audiences. But I can see from the beginning of today, most of you are teachers. So we're gonna, we're gonna focus on that. Okay. So on the left-hand side there, again, you can see in more detail the 12 professional practices. So again, touching on some of the things from our word cloud earlier, planning lessons, um, uh, understanding our learners, we were talking about motivation before. Assessing learning, quite a few of you from the work cloud talked about that. And uh, also ICT, integrating ICT, a number of you in the work cloud were, were, were interested in that for your own professional development at the moment. Okay, so you can you can pick out and in a few minutes you're going to have a look at this, these professional practices in a bit more detail. Okay, uh, I'm going to help you with that. And on the right hand side, you can see those four areas, sorry, the four stages of development. Okay. Uh, as I showed you before, from awareness at the beginning through to uh, understanding, engagement, and finishing with integration. So again, you could assess where you might be. So for different practices, maybe on in one, maybe in planning lessons and courses, you feel that you're quite strong. Maybe you're at level three, okay? But with integrating ICT, maybe you, you're still very unfamiliar with that. So maybe you just feel that at that one, you'll be at kind of level one in terms of your stage of development. And remember for all of these, there's no right or wrong answer. It's very much about you using the framework uh, for you to, to assess where you're at and to think about where you want to go. Okay, so here's a couple of examples uh, in more detail. So again, you can have a look at these. You can see them online as well. 
uh, if you if you follow the link that Ha shared in the chat, um, you can see this is just the description of two of, of the 12 um, professional practices. The one on the left there looking at planning lessons and courses, the one on the right looking at knowledge of the subject. So what do you know about English language, uh, the English language, different aspects of uh, the English language and teaching uh, English language to your students. And finally, here's a summary of uh, all putting it, putting it all together, basically. All right. And again, you've got another link at the bottom, which you can have a look at. <clears throat> OK, moving on. So I've been talking. That's as much talking as I want to do for, for the moment. Um, we'll have a break in maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But before we do that, there's a couple of couple of tasks that I want, want you to do. OK, I'd like you to do so. If you remember, I showed you on here the 12 professional practices, and I'm just going to show you a very short video, okay, from the from the British Council, and hopefully we've got the sound. And as you watch the video, I want you to just think about or note down three ways, three ways in which the CPD framework could help you as a teacher. And if you could just put that in the chat, okay, as you watch the video. So I'm going to just go on to the, oops, bear with me a second. Yes, I hopefully. Can you hear the sound? Ah, can you hear the sound? I cannot hear the sound. Can't hear Make the sure sound. Make sure you do share sound. Yeah, let me just double check that I've double got that. Check. Is that on audio settings? Is it on here? I can't remember what you've... No, I like uh, you You put a tick on share screen. Go back to that one, yeah. I've yeah, that go back to that one, share screen. Go back screen. to this one. Yes. Yeah, ah, the one in the corner. And you can yeah, see it's cool. their computer sound. Already. Done it. You, okay, you should be you should be able to hear now. I always forget to click that little button. Okay, so remember, remember the question. Okay, three ways in which the CPD framework can help you as a teacher with your professional development. It's just a very short, very short video. For teachers to engage in successful CPD, they need support to help identify their strengths and the areas they need to develop. The British Council CPD framework for teachers is based on our global knowledge of teaching and is designed to be flexible enough to work across subjects and contexts. It provides teachers, teacher educators and school leaders with a common language so they can discuss development needs and set development pathways based on each individual. The framework is built around 12 professional practices these represent key areas in which teachers apply professional knowledge and utilize specific skills. Each one is interlinked, representing a combination of practical and conceptual understanding, skills and knowledge. Through our self-assessment and classroom observation tools, the framework helps teachers map their skills against the professional practices according to four stages. From simple awareness of a practice to an understanding of it, engagement with it and integration of it into their classes. With this knowledge, teachers, schools and ministries of education can identify the right resources. British Council development materials are mapped to the framework and we're working with a growing number of education institutions to map their own materials too. All the parameters can be tailored to a specific country standards. It's not an inspection device. It's a tool to support inclusive, teacher-led self-development with peer support wherever it's needed. Okay, so that's the video, very short, <clears throat> less than two minutes. So again, now in the chat, in the chat, let's go back to our question. Okay, so three ways in which the framework can help you as a teacher. If you could just write in the chat, that would be great. Right, 
from what from what you've seen in the video. Just give you maybe one minute to do that. Okay, so I'm trying to look at the chat there. So uh, Liam, I think I said identify strengths, yeah? To map the skills you need to improve, good. Uh, peer support, says Zhang, I think that's Zhang, okay. Uh, provide assessment tools, says Ling as, Lian as well. Map the skills, identify the strengths, that's good, yeah. And think about ways to develop, thank you, Huang Lei. Okay, so you've got, some, you've got some ideas there from the from the video. Now, before we have a little break, I've got one more task for you, okay? <clears throat> I'm going to put you into uh, breakout rooms, breakout groups, breakout rooms. And in the, your groups, I want you to look at the 12 professional practices that you can see there. You've already got, I think Har put the link in, in the chat before, so you can open that link to the British Council Teaching English website, which will take you straight to the professional development section for teachers. You've got the 12 professional practices there, and in your groups, I want you to discuss and try to agree on just four, which obviously you're all going to be a mixed groups with from different uh, backgrounds, but try to agree on the top four, for your group, the top four that you're going to choose and why, okay? And I'll just give you maybe five minutes in your groups. So I'm gonna assign, I'm gonna assign you automatically to break to breakout rooms. We've got 130 people. So I'll put create 13 different rooms. So there are about 10 people in each room and I'll try to come around and listen to you. So. Uh, remember, you've got 12 practices. I just want you to choose four, the, the four that you think are most important for your group, okay? I'll give you five minutes, okay? And then we'll come back, we'll hear your ideas, then we'll have a quick five, 10 minute break. Okay, the rooms are open now.
Okay, so welcome back, everybody. I'm sorry if you were in the middle of a discussion. <laughs> I could see from going around the rooms, I only had a chance to visit about four or five, or maybe six or seven actually rooms. Um, so I know you might be at different stages of discussion. Some rooms were very quiet, which I'm a bit concerned about, but some rooms were having some great discussions. So let's just maybe hear from maybe three of the rooms uh, just to share your idea. Let me put my, put my screen back on with the question to help us remember. And then we can have a little, after we've heard some, got some feedback, then we can have a break. Okay, hopefully, can you see my screen again? Hi, hi, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Great, thanks. Okay, uh, maybe let's go, any volunteers from any of the groups? Um, I will go, to, I'll choose a group. Let's, I'll go to room two. Miss Zhang from room two, could you share your ideas please? Because your group were discussing. Mm. No, nope. okay, very quiet from room two. Uh, what about room five? Mr. Hai from Hanoi. You're, you had a, quite a few people in your group were discussing. Can you share your ideas so far? Mr. Wu Hai from Hanoi. Nope, okay. <laughs> Let's try a different room. Let's try... Um, Room 11, ah, yes, thank you, thank you. I was just gonna say room 11 and then you wrote that there. Yeah, yeah, aha, brilliant, ha, huh? can you can you share, I think you were speaking with Yakoi, weren't you, in, from Cambodia in your room? So can you share, ha? Huh? Will I, can you unmute for mystery, huh? Yeah, thanks. It's Lady Tweeha, yeah, I think. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, is that Ha? Hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, hi, hi, uh, hi. I can hear you. Hi, can David. You Long time no see. Yeah. Nice to see you again. Uh, you remember the time 2012 in Da Nang, uh, University of Foreign Languages? I do remember, I yes. Have great teaching. <laughs> On behalf of our group, Room 11, uh, we would like to present um, for the four most important professional practice um, in our perspective. And ha, uh, ha, can you say, can you say why you might, why you chose, because obviously all 12 are important, but from your group, can you also say why you, your group thinks those four are important? Yes. Or the most um, important, I should say. Yes. According to, yeah, from Cambodia, he think lesson plan is most important because uh, in his country, apart from the, um, the material, teachers have to prepare everything carefully to involve the student in the lesson. So if the student involved in the lesson properly, he can manage the lesson well, and that can help him to become a perfect teacher. That is first thing. Um, any ideas? Okay, so that so you just you just chose one as the the most important from your one. Yeah? There's only one, and not four. Only one. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I agree with you. From Cambodia, lesson plan is most important. Okay, right? that's fine. No problem. That's all. Right, thanks, thanks Han. Nice to see you again. Um, let's Thank go you. to. I can see a few hands are up, which is great. Let's go to maybe Hale. Is it Hale? Which room are you from? Can you, sh can you briefly share your group's discussion, please? Um, hello, can you hear me? Hear you, hear you fine, uh, right. uh, yeah? So good morning, Mr. David Date and everyone. My name is Hanley and I'm from Lakhong University. Um, to represent our group number 10, oh, okay, I'll thanks. share with you today uh, the four most important for us as teachers. So, Coming from the background, the reason why we choose them as the important practices for us as a teacher is that we put the learners on top of our teaching. 
So that is the reason why we come up with the following four most important issues. Number one, um, we discuss understanding learners. Mm -hmm. So understanding learners may come from the way that we check their needs. So before we start the course with the students, we always have the check-in session with them to see what they need from the course and what they would like to have from their lesson with us. So this is also a very important thing for checking, uh, for need analysis with the learners. Number two, it is um, developing 21st century skills. Um, we think that it is very important for the teachers and educators to develop the, the learners 21st century skills because apart from their knowledge, apart from the lesson that we give them, we also need to focus on which skills that our learners need to develop to be uh, an active citizen in the future, to be a leader in their own business in the future. Can I just answer yeah. that as well? Can I just answer that very quickly? I think maybe for us as teachers as well, as teachers, we need to develop our 21st century skills. I think the last 18 months has certainly shown that in terms of, so we can think about not only developing our students' 21st century skills, but also, also our own as teachers, right. yeah? Okay. Uh, thank you for your two, question. And um, two more, I have joined- Two more, yeah? Two more, two more, two more practices that your room, room, uh, room 10 chose. Can you share? Miss Han? Oh, sorry. And you've got two more. Can you share? Uh, so I, I don't need to explain, right? Yeah, no, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's okay. So uh, the next two more, it is professional development. And the last one is lesson planning. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Ha. So the lesson planning, the same as the as the previous group, Miss Ha's group from Da Nang. Okay. And also professional development. So professional development overall. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ha, from room 10. I can see. Um, I can see Miss Tang. I've got a hand up from Tui and Guang. Can you share from which group were you from? And can you share? Did you have to choose the same four or maybe a different four in your group? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, I'm coming from group seven, and after a very serious discussions, uh, we think that the four important, most important practices for teachers right now is understand uh, understanding learners that is uh, I mean uh, it is very important in all the times uh, as you are being an uh, English teachers um, and uh, and the second thing is planning lesson and courses and the third is managing the lesson two uh, practices uh, are very important yeah. when we have been oh, applying the new general education uh, 2018 uh, with different types of the textbook and different types of activities uh, so that the teachers really need to, to know uh, more about how to plan uh, the lesson uh, to meet the, the, the learners uh, uh, abilities and competence. Um, yeah. And also one more thing is assessing learnings. We are really uh, concerned about this uh, as you know that uh, the, the English teacher uh, haven't been trained uh, about how to assess uh, the learning outcome, especially for the productive skill like speaking and, and writing. Uh, right. We don't know what the what are the criteria and uh, uh, the framework of the uh, uh, speaking test or even the I mean the process to to handle a speaking test. So uh, we really need uh, the knowledge about this one uh, this uh, issue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, um, Tang. <laughs> so I forgot your name for a second there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you just, you, so your group just chose three, is that right? Yeah, four. Understanding learners, uh, planning lessons and courses, managing yeah. the lessons and assessing oh, managing the learning. Lessons, sorry, I missed, yes. I, missed, yeah. I missed that one. I missed managing the lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so managing the lesson is, is very much about classroom, classroom yes. language, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, sorry, I'm nice. Screen's going crazy. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm just going to very quickly uh, be um, before we have a quick break. Okay, I can see a few more hands up, but I'm just I'm mindful of time, and I want you to have a, have a break. Can I ask the other groups? We only got to hear from room. Uh, oh, I forgot which room that was. Has room. Uh, 
room 10, room 7, and uh, Miss Haas from Danang. How, which room are you in again? I've forgotten now. Uh, room 11, room 11, that was it. Yeah. So from the other groups, maybe in the chat, you can just type in, okay, which, which one, three, or four professional practices did you choose and why were those important to you? Remember, there's no right or wrong answer. All 12 are important at different times. So we can decide, again, we're doing this as a group activity. After the session today, you can think about that yourself, for, for yourself, and you can determine which of which 12 you want to focus on, uh, maybe in the next six months or 12 months. And obviously then in the next few years, you maybe change your priorities. But again, using the CPD framework, the British Council one or, or a Cambridge one or a different one, whichever framework you like, you can use that to help you guide, uh, guide your own professional development and think a little bit more about that. Um, before we have a break, I'm just gonna go back to the, oh, we haven't got very far. I was gonna, sh I was gonna go back to the, to the word cloud uh, and share with you the word cloud. Uh, bear with me a second. Jump in between screens here, I apologize. There we go. Yeah, so if you can see now, hopefully you can see. So again, it's be interesting perhaps to look at the word cloud. Uh, I'll leave it on the screen during the break and think about um, which of those, do you, do you agree with those? Do you have similar areas that you'd like to develop in your own professional development? And are there any of those areas? I think, oh yeah, that, that kind of, links very, no, uh, very closely to professional practice number six or professional practice number eight or number three, okay, from the 12 professional practices in the wheel there. Okay, let's just have a very quick break. Let's just have a, because we've, we've been talking for quite some time now. Let's just have a five minute break or a seven minute break. It's, it's 9.43 now, let's come back at 9.50. So just a chance for you to stand up, move around, get some fresh air, go to the toilet, get a new cup of tea or coffee or water, okay? And we'll start back again at 9.50. We've got some more uh, group discussion, group sharing activities for you, okay? Is that okay? Okay. If you've got any questions, any comments, just please put them in the chat. Don't, don't wait for me, okay? Oh yeah, great. I can see people adding to the Mentimeter. So that's, that's really good, okay? Keep adding to that. That would be a great resource for us at the end, at the end of the session, okay? All right, so back at 9.50, just six, seven minutes break. Thank you, everybody.
Okay, so let's uh, make a start. Let's welcome back everybody. Okay, I um, hope we had a chance to get some fresh air or have a little break. <clears throat> um, while we wait for people to come back uh, and rejoin us, I'm just going to very quickly show you um, a little bit of information about a conference that is coming up uh, in the next few months. If you just bear with me a second. Ha, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can okay. see the screen. I'm having some problems with my mouse for some reason. Ah, there it is. Okay, and I'll show you the I'll show you these again at the end of the session. Okay, so yeah, so in December, uh, the British Council are having a, a conference called New Directions. Have any of you, you can write in the chat, have any of you attended New Directions in the past? This will be the ninth New Directions. It's an East Asia conference, which focuses on language assessment and different aspects of language assessment. Um, so again, you can see the information on the screen here for you and the registration details. In particular, notice that there's early bird re registration until the end of this month, until the end of October, um, <clears throat> with reduced uh, but with reduced fees for you as well. You can see the links uh, there as well. Again, when I share the PowerPoints with you, you can find out more information. Um, some of the key speakers that we'll be having this year, um, you can see there, and some of the discussions as well on some of the different topics, including equality, uh, diversity and inclusion and English medium education, as well as climate action uh, in language assessment. Um, <clears throat> so there you go, you've got some more featured speakers there. And again, with all the details. And also, one thing that might be of interest to you as well is, uh, again, there's an opportunity here for you if you're, if you're doing some research, uh, to share your research ideas with the conference community as well. And again, if you visit the website, uh, I'll put this link in the chat for you later. You can find out a little bit more about the, uh, the best student research idea as well. Okay, so that's just a brief introduction. I'll share these slides with you as I say, uh, towards the end as well, at, uh, at the end of today's session. Okay, so um, welcome back everybody. <clears throat> so before the break, we started looking at a bit more depth at the framework. I'm thinking about um, how you could start to use it. And now in the remaining time, we have about maybe 30 or maybe maximum 45 minutes left. Um, let's try to delve a little bit deeper into these, all right? Um, <clears throat> and think a bit more about these. And um, before I do that, I mentioned that the British Council has CPD frameworks. So a number of you from the, from the mentee poll at the beginning, a number of you were, about 25% of you were university lecturers or um, teacher educators as well. So also on the British Council Teaching English website, you will find a similar, slightly different, but a similar framework, not for teachers, but this one is aimed at teacher educators, those professionals who work with teachers. So if you're a university lecturer or if you're a trainer, or if you're doing mon um, mentoring of um, teachers, uh, you might be interested in this framework here. Again, so very similar, but slightly different professional practices. Same kind of four stages of development, different professional practices, uh, just 10 this time instead of 12. Okay, and focusing on some of the feet, some of the practices are the same, some of them are different, because obviously it's a different target audience. Here are some examples. So for example, one is not about how understanding how students learn, but rather understanding how teachers learn, okay? And another one here on the right-hand side, uh, looking at supporting and mentoring teachers and how we can do that, whether we're doing uh, teaching at university, maybe pre-service uh, students, uh, teachers, or whether we're teaching, working with in-service teachers. So that's just a very brief introduction uh, to the British Council CPD framework for teacher educators. I think most people on the call are teachers, so I'm going to focus on, on that audience today. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, and as I say, you can click on the link there or you can use the QR code uh, to take you to the Teaching English website. 
All right. So what we're going to do now, if you bear with me a second, we've already done that. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to give you some a chance to choose this time. So if we think about the 12 professional practices that you can see on the screen, this time I'm going to give you the opportunity to spend a little bit more time looking more closely at just one professional practice. So before the break, you were asked to choose in your groups with uh, colleagues from Vietnam and mainly from Vietnam and Cambodia, you chose maybe your top three or your top four. Now what I want you to do is choose what, just one professional practice that you'd like to develop. And I'd like you to choose your room before I put you into group uh, breakout rooms automatically. This time, what I want you to do is to go into the professional practice um, of your choosing. So I will just create 12 rooms, not 13 rooms, and you have to decide. So for example, if you were interested in assessing learning, which room would you join? You can just write in the chat. If you wanted to talk with people who are also interested in assessing learning, which room would you join? Yeah, so Homsi says room six. Yeah, we've got a few now room six. Excellent, okay. If you would like to look at how you could improve your technical skills, looking at technology and digital tools, which room would you, which room would you join? So not room six. If you're looking at technology and improving your technological skills, which room might you join to discuss? Good, yeah, a few of you now saying room seven, excellent, okay. And also before the break, like Ha from room 10 and uh, Tang, I think it was Tang, from room seven, talked about understanding learners as something they'd be interested in. If you wanted to look at understanding learners, which room would you join? So not room six, not room seven. Oh, Homsi, you're very fast, excellent. Yes, room two. Yes, thank you, uh, Hai Dang. Thank you, uh, Huyen. I can't remember if that's Huyen or Zio. Uh, and don't have uh, yeah, room two, excellent, all right. So you know which, ro which room you're going to join, fantastic, okay. So <clears throat> before I, um, before I uh, put you into your rooms, I'm gonna show you what you're going to do. So I'm gonna take us off the, the PowerPoint for a moment, if I can. Mm. Okay, so what I want you to do, bear with me a second. Ah, there we go, that's what I'm looking for there. So for example, for example, if we go to the professional practices here, this is the page. So this is the video that we looked at before, okay? This is on the link from Teaching English, okay? So for example, let's say we're going to look at understanding learners, yeah? So if you're in room two, looking at understanding learners. I've just put the link in the chat there for this page. It's the Teaching English Professional Development Teachers page. So you can scroll down here. You can click to download the CPD framework for teachers with all the information. So you can click here and open that and find out a bit more about understanding learners. And then you can go down underneath all 12 professional practices. Underneath here, you've got lots of resources. So I'm going to click on understanding learners here. Okay. And underneath here, you've got a description. So this is the description here of what it means, what the different aspects are of understanding our learners. For example, their age, their interests, 
their preferred ways of learning, their autonomy, and you've got lots of different ideas there. And then underneath, you've got some articles. You've got some other content that you can find. So what I want you to do in your groups, remember you are choosing which professional practice you're interested in from one to 12. In your groups, you're gonna have a little bit more time, maybe about 15 minutes, okay? So have a look at the practice, understand what it means, and you're going to think together about which resources could you use from here, okay? And then after about 15 minutes, we're going to come together and I'm gonna invite some of the groups to share what have they found, what materials, what resources have they found about that, that one practice that you'd like to develop. And then you're gonna share that with the other groups. Okay, and we'll see. And then we'll probably start to wrap up there. So we're starting to move into a little bit of action planning now. All right. Okay, so I hope that is clear for you. All right, so I will create the breakout rooms. And remember, I'm not going to assign you. You have to, um, you have to decide which room you are going to join, okay? From one to 12, okay. So I'm opening all the rooms now, there you go. Okay, so good to see all oh, quite a few people have joined room two and room six. Remember, there are 12 different practices you can join. You can choose any of the 12, whichever one is of interest to you. Yeah. I will come around and uh, monitor you in your rooms over the next 15 minutes, yeah?
thank you. Yeah, sorry, it, it muted me. I didn't, I didn't mute myself. Thanks for letting me know, whoever let me know that. Uh, thank you, Ha. Yeah, so um, some groups were more popular than others. Uh, sorry, some topics from the framework were more popular than others. So let's just hear from um, maybe three of the groups, okay? Let's hear first of all from room two. They were looking at understanding learners. Then we can move to uh, room 10, who chose an interesting topic, looking at multilingual approaches to uh, teaching and learning. And then we can finish with room six, who looked at assessing learning, okay? And let's just hear your ideas and your recommendations. So we'll aim to, it's just coming up to 10.30 now. We'll aim to wrap up everything by 10.45. So we started about 15 minutes late, so we'll finish about 10 minutes late. Is that okay, everybody? Yep. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and again, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask us as we go. Yeah. So let's go to room two. Uh, I think Huyen and Homsi, I think you have been nominated as the, as the presenters, the representatives. Can you share your ideas? Can you share what you found from the, from the website? Yeah. Room two, understanding learners. Huyen, Homsi, you were very active in the room before. No, okay, let's go to, we'll try and come back to you guys later. Let's go to room 10. Uh, we had moderator Ha in there. We had Lika and, and Koi and other, a couple of other people as well. I think, Ha, can you help me to, to decide who would be your presenter from your room. You're on mute, Ha. Ha, you're on mute. Okay, sorry. We all do, um, we all do it, don't worry. Koi. Koi? Yes. Koi? Yeah, okay, Koi, can you share for us, for your group, please? Ah. Okay, so ah, Ms. Kim, can you, Ms. Kim, can you? Ah, so Ha, can you help with the un unmuting? Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, room two is ready, but we're muted. Ah, okay, sorry, I didn't see the message. Okay, so Ha, can you help with that, please? Okay, okay. Wait a minute, sorry. It's okay. Uh, okay, so Lian or is it Zio? Zio raised a hand from room two. Is that right? Can I unmute? I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah I can do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll unmute. Okay. Hi, Zio. Hello. Zio or Hugh? Hi. Uh, actually, my name is Huyen. Huyen. Uh, okay. You've yeah, changed yeah. your name. What? I wish you'd keep your names in Vietnamese style, then I can understand when everyone <laughs> puts it like Ding Lung Tum, I don't know which name. Which name. <laughs> Okay, oh, just call Huyen. me Huyen. Just call Huyen. me Huyen. All right, okay. Okay, Huyen. thanks, Huyen. Yeah. You're, from room, you're from room two, yeah? So, uh, yeah, that's right. So, Brilliant. actually, in understanding the learners, um, I want to share about uh, learners' motivation, which uh, is I really interested in that one. And I had a lot of difficulty to motivate my learners in the classroom because most of them are, you know, um, from primary and secondary levels. So I did try many ways and I just find one, uh, you know, uh, file from the British Council, the Teaching English website that you share, which yep. is creativity in English. Uh, English yes. Is it this one here I'm showing on the screen now? Wayne, can you see? By Ian now. Yeah, uh, I can see that. Yeah, you, can you see that the creativity in the uh, language, English, classroom, the language yeah. classroom? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. That's, that's where I, I find the source of information. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And I did try many activities suggested by uh, other teachers in the book. And it's turned out to be, you know, successful. Some of the activities really work in my class. Mm -hmm. And uh, the students, they are engaged in the grammar and writing lessons, which most of my students say no when it comes to that lessons. 
And uh, one of the activity is like storytelling and a kind of like, you know, uh, sound stimulus and uh, poems uh, and many things like that way. And actually the students, they, even the very shy students, they started to uh, express themselves in their own way because according to the book I read, that is when I create um, a classroom that encourages the creativity, then the student need to feel safe to express themselves. And one more source that I find is, it is called EOT Picks. So I did oh. share with the other teachers in the chat box. That's, that is a kind of website, uh, the teachers, from many countries, I think all over the world, they contributed the pictures from the real uh, world. And those pictures they use in a class to, you know, arouse a student's uh, interest in creative thinking. And they can use that one to, you know, um, make the students imagine the, the, or British, the stories and yeah, and even role play with that pictures. And it's turned out very, you know, effective. Okay. Yeah. And and Leon, yeah. thank you. Leon has, Leon has shared that in the in the chat as well. And I, I've, yeah, I've that's shared, right. I've shared, I've shared the link to this article in the chat. So brilliant, Hui. And that's exactly the kind of thing I wanted. I wanted you just to, because you only had a short amount of time, but it's great that you're in your group, you focused on one topic, understanding learners. You focused on the issue of motivation. Right. We, we, in our word cloud, remember, many teachers have, have challenges with, with motivating their students, primary, secondary or, or, or older students. And now you've started to find maybe two or three useful resources to share with each other and to help you with your professional development. Brilliant. That's that's exactly the idea. Thanks for sharing, Hui, and thanks, Leanne, and your and room two. Let's move to um, Ha from your room 10 for multilingual approaches. Can you help Koi or Lika or somebody to to um to present? If can you um, can we unmute them? Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Thanks. Uh -huh. Or maybe if you Lika or Koi, if you raise your hand, then I can see you, and then I can un I can unmute you immediately. Like if you raise your hand, like we and raised her hand. Yeah. Oh, Lika ready. Lika. Lika is ready. Okay. Because I asked her to unmute. Oh, oh okay. All right. So hopefully she'll come in a yes. moment. Hello, teachers. Hi, Lika. From Cambodia. Yes. Okay. We can see. We can. He. We can hear you now. Yeah. Yes. So can you share? What did you? What did you learn about? I'm I'm sharing the screen as well. What did you uh, from? So you looked at multilingual approaches. So maybe a different, maybe an, a slightly unusual topic to choose. So what did you learn about multilingual approaches, and what resources might you share with your colleagues? Yes, uh, I got about Gahos uh, and one more about from. The teachers, I don't remember remember her name, but she told us the links of reading, find the article for teaching the student. Uh -huh. That's the student, they can find uh, their interesting topic that they want to read. So uh, when we do like this, we don't make students uh, get bored. That okay. they can choose one topic that they like and they can enjoy with that topic. Mm, okay. Yes, teacher. Right, yes. thank you. Right, thanks, Lika. And Ha, is there anything else you want to add from your, from your, because the moderator Ha was also in, in room 10 looking at multilingual approaches. Anything else you would add, Ha? To what I, Lika I, think, I think that's enough. We'll spend more time for other groups. Okay, sure. No problem. Thanks. So, uh, last but not least, let's go to room six. Um, they looked at assessing learning. Um, so again, I'll share the screen with you. And I think we're going to hear from Ha and Tang and Sokuk. Is that right? Yeah. 
who's going to speak? If you raise your hand, then I can unmute you. Yes, please raise your hand if you want to share. Raise your hand, and then I can unmute you. Yeah, me and how or myself can unmute you. Yes. I can't. I can't do it hard. Unfortunately, I'm, it won't let me. <laughs> I mustn't be the co-host, so has to has to uh, be you. So, it, so you mean that I, I would, uh, would talk in 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 instead of the outgroups? You mean so? I who's, think, spe who's speaking now? Um, Miss Tang is okay, or I will do. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you're both unmuted now. You can you decide okay. amongst yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Tui, how can you do share? Okay. okay, yes. All right. Um, after discussing with a um, member of the group, um, we move on to, uh, wait a minute, look at um, assessing listening. Learning. Sorry, yes, assessing I'm... learning. Yeah. And um, you know that. Uh, I'm, sharing have... that on the, I'm sharing that on the okay. screen now for you, Ha. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I can see it on the screen. And um, um, there are lots of things, you know, um, in, in the website, uh, BC provides lots of information for assessment. And um, I, I'm very fascinated with uh, lots of material and information here, but I especially um, um, interested in ongoing assessment. Can you okay. please, uh, on, on, ongoing assessment? Okay, uh, con continuous, continuous assessment. Continuous assessment, yeah. Assessment, yeah. Okay, yeah. here you are. And yeah. um, you, you know that uh, ongoing assessment actually is a very, um, very important process to help the student to improve the process of their learning and also teach to ourselves how to think twice and also change their, uh, the way that we are uh, teaching in order to, to maintain the, um, the, the goal of our teaching methodology and mm -hmm. also to satisfy MOET and DOES uh, requirements uh, because a new direction um, get issued uh, every month. I think that every month, lots of <laughs> direction, right? right. And not, not just only on um, assessing uh, for the uh, uh, proficiency tests like ILTS or PET or, S or et cetera, but I mean that ongoing process is very important to um, to help the, the, the student uh, better their language. Um, okay. okay, that's all. And what about you, Thang? Can you please help me? Uh, um, I see Haleri Hen, but I don't know. <laughs> Good morning, morning, everyone. Yes. All right. Morning. Uh, yeah. In addition to your ideas, uh, based on what we have discussed in the room and um, reading from the magazines in the link that Mr. David Gate has just sent to us. Uh, I also find an article which is named Assessment for Learning. I think this is a very um, interesting article for us to look through because okay. it, it differentiates what? between two terms, assessment of learning and assessment for learning. Excellent. Is it this, Hale, is it, is it this article here? The one I'm showing yes. on the screen now. It's on, um, okay. it's on assessing learning. Yes. Yeah, assessment for learning. Assessing learning. Assessment yeah. for learning. Yes. Yeah. I'll share, um, I'll sh yeah. Okay, I'll share I'll share that in the chat for everybody now, yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, continue. So what, what did you find yeah. interesting Hale? What did you find interesting about this article? Can you share well, your ideas with the group? Yes, thank you. Uh, basically, we often uh, are familiar with the, the traditional approaches, which is um, that we assess of learning, the assessment of learning. But uh, after reading this article, I realized that assessment for learning is very important in our teacher uh, de development career, and yeah. it occurs at all stages of the learning process. So in this, in this article, the author suggests us that the students are encouraged to take an active role and um, they will become more regulated learners and um, they will be able to be more confident to, to learn throughout their lives. And um, um, the second thing is uh, the key principle of assessment for learning. I think it is also 
um, the necessary principle which is used to guide classroom practice. Uh, for example, it helps to communicate confidence that every learner can improve or it develops learners' confidence in peer and self-assessment. And as a teachers, we can collect information about individual learners to better understand their needs. Uh, also to adjust our teaching uh, plan. Yeah. So before the, before, before the course, as a teacher, we, we need to carry out the um, need analysis to check what the students want to get from us. And based on the ELO, educational, educational learning outcomes, uh, we will be able to share the learning objectives with learners instead of just deliver the knowledge to them. Yeah. And um, the last thing I want to mention here is the way that the, the author in this article, he or she mentioned the, the specific and useful feedback that the teacher can give to their learners because it yeah. helps to inform learners about gaps in their knowledge, understanding or skills and how to close those gaps. So I think this is a very amazing article that everyone should have a look at. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Halle. That's a really that's a really good summary of the article and a really good promotion of the article as well. Um, and I can see uh, your colleague as well has written in the uh, in the chat. Yeah, comparing like assessment of learning and assessment for learning. Assessment of learning is more to do with summative tests, uh, that kind of thing. Whereas assessment for learning, as you said, is more about formative and it's more about giving feedback to the students and also I like the fact that you talked about planning our lessons and think focusing on learning outcomes as well because again there's that feed. so again so great and it's a, a really so it is a very good I'm I've been scanning it and it is a very good article to to introduce some of the principles and as you say some some useful techniques that we can use as teachers uh, in our classrooms I think we're running out of time unfortunately everybody um we're already over time because we started 15 minutes late because of the uh, the opening ceremony. So hopefully now I'm just going to very quickly uh, show you. So you've started to use the frameworks and you've started to use the professional practices to identify some resources, maybe not action planning as such, but you've started to think about which resources are useful. You've recommended some articles, which professional practices of the 12 you want to develop. And yes, yeah, starting to review the resources and think about suitable ones for you and suitable ones for your colleagues. So that's fantastic. That's that's really, really good. Um, I've got some final reflection questions there for you to think about. So think about from today, what was the most important learning for you? What have you, again, you can write in the chat, what is the one thing that you really want to take away from today's workshop? And you've got some more questions there. What do you feel about CPD frameworks? Um, can they help you in your own professional development? And are you confident now at using either the British Council framework or other frameworks? I remember I showed you different, different ones at the start. If you're interested, certainly have a look, look around, find the one that works best, best for you as well, okay? So hopefully today, again, just to finish, Hopefully we've talked about what is CPD, what are CPD frameworks, and we've introduced some examples. You, hopefully you've thought about how you can use the framework, the, te the one for teachers, there's also the separate one for teacher educators. And towards the end there, after the break, you started to identify and address your own personal needs, choosing one or two um, professional practices that you want to develop, and then start looking, doing some action planning, thinking about some resources that you can use. OK, and yeah, that's it. That's what we've done this morning. Um, we probably don't have much time for a discussion, but we've maybe got five, about less than five minutes. Sorry, right? any, any final questions uh, that you want to ask me or ask each other? OK, Hi, back to you. Yes, okay. So due to the limited time, we're going to include all the questions so you can email the presenters uh, uh, directly. So on behalf of the T-Show International Convention um, 2021, we wish you all the best 
with a productive day and meaningful rest of our virtual conventions. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Ha. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending this morning. Okay, Have, enjoy the rest of Viet Tessel. Thank you, David Dice, for the wonderful presentation. And thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's Tao. Thanks, Tao. It's me. <laughs> thank you, David Dice, very much. Okay, you're welcome. Yes, I will share the slides. I don't know how, but I'll share, share them with, uh, with Miss Tao and Miss Ha, and we'll find a way, Pauline, to share those with you. Yes. All right, I'm, looking, I'm just looking at the chat as, we, as you sign out. Yeah, uh, Huyen asked, do teachers need to make sure they master all of the areas of the CPD framework? Not really, it's, it's a framework for you to, to, to you just use as you want to use it. So at different times of your career, you might wanna focus on dis different aspects of your teaching, okay? So um, you don't have to master all 12 immediately. It's kind of, a, it's, a, it's a progressive uh, tool that you can use over time. No more questions. Okay. Oh, okay. The button to send the file next to the chat box, next to the emoji. Oh, okay, let me find that. No, uh, not, on, not on my interface, there isn't. Okay, ha, ta, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off now. Okay. It's okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks. Great to, thanks for your support today. And uh, Tao, nice to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you Bye. again. We are happy Bye. to be with you. Of you. All right. Thank you very much. much. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, Miss Lu. Oh, I'm. I'm finishing. The report. We start at eight twenty, right? At eight twenty.